So here's a small video that shows a little function that I use quite a lot, but someone I was working with today hadn't seen or hadn't used, which is quite useful if you use titles and want a, uh, a rectangle or a bounding box around them that fits to the size of the text. So instead of having a rectangle on your title and then having text that fits on it and the box doesn't change, this allows you to change the size of the box as well as the text. Uh, and then also covers the uh, problem sometimes people have where there might not be a trailing uh, space or space at the end of the text, so the text can fit in the box too, uh, too cramped or look a little bit too busy. So there's a function within Excel that allows you to look at your data source and then add spaces either side. This is something I use quite a bit, but like I say, a chap I was working with today didn't use it, so I uh, explained it to him. So I thought, well, if I make a video, it might be useful for other people. So we start by opening uh, Titler. Uh, within Titler itself, we just create a nice uh, rectangle box that we use as our background for our title text. So a nice red rectangle here, uh, and we name that accordingly. And then we can add a text box that would be the uh, the box we'd used for our title itself or the data source uh, within vmix so we just have some general text here uh, which we can pop in and resize and bold up and you see the problem is that the text doesn't uh, will not always match the box so the text might be bigger than the box or sometimes a different name might be smaller so sometimes it looks a little bit weird what we want to try and do is have it so the text and the box follow uh, i'll just rename uh, rename the presenter name here as well so what we can do is we can look at the red box itself and select that. And then if we go to the top and go into the uh, the format menu, you'll see there a little box in the middle where we can actually bound that box to the name. So we bound it to the name there. So now you can see that the two are linked. So if we move one, both move. Um, the problem we do have though is that the red rectangle has been bound to the name box, which is of a general size. So if we type in a small name, you still see that it fits uh, the red box is too big, so the text doesn't adjust accordingly. So if I type in presenter there, we can see there's still a gap at the end. We want What we want is the box to follow the size of the name. So what we can do is we can go into home and then choose that drop down menu there. And on the text box, we adjust it to be width and height. So now the text box will fit exactly what the width is. And then the red box is obviously following that box. So it follows accordingly. So whatever text we type in, it fits the box and fits the text box at the same time and matches quite nicely. So if we have a small name or a big name, it doesn't really matter and the box falls. The problem we have here as well is that we, we perhaps have the P and the E look a little bit cramped at the sides. So we can look at that next as well when we come to our data source. We'll just save this down as a titler we will use later in vMix and save that down. So we can see the Excel spreadsheet that I'm using here. There's the names I've got for my presenters all typed in accordingly. And you can see that we need to put in a function here called concatenate which basically combines various strings. So we'll combine a space, which is a uh, quotation marks and a space, and then comma A1, which is the first name, and then a space at the end. And then that function alone will create a new string in column B, which has got a space at the start of John and a space after Smith. So we can copy that and paste it across all these entries, these six entries, and you'll see that now they've been adjusted from what we typed in in column A to be better in column B. So if we save that down, we can go into vMix itself, look at the title that's been imported there just to reload it, and then we'll associate this with that data source Excel document we've done, and then adjust it to look at column two rather than column one. So we go into our title editor for the, the and go to data sources. We can then manage them. Uh, I'll just delete this one that was on there currently just to show you can add it. So what we do is we add a new data source. We add an Excel data source and browse for the file that we're looking for, and then open that up. And then I'll open up the Excel document. You'll see there the names original and the names with the concatenated function. We now look at the data source, choose the Excel sheet we had, and then use column two as our source for selected. And you'll see there that the John Smith one has now got a space before the John and the space after the Smith. So the title looks a little bit better there without the J um, sort of edged up and the H edged up. So if we bring up our data sources menu there, we can see if we select anything now, the box changes size and also there's a gap at the start and the end. So that looks a lot better than the original titles. Um, so yeah, so hopefully that's all good. And so we put the data source up there. We can just see the big ones there, line them up and bring them up. So hopefully that gives you an idea of the two functions I'm on about uh, and might be useful for you. And please put any comments in the box below. But uh, yeah, all the best.